Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome to Celebrating Act 2, where John and I are speaking with Manny Pacheco on our recent visit to Cinecon 58, held in 2022. Cinecon 58. Manny, I was so impressed um, by that event because I call it hardcore. This was hardcore uh, classic film. Yeah. A lot of stuff that's never been seen before came out of the museums, things like that. But I was also impressed with the quality of the presenters. Many of them were experts, authors, well-known people. One of them happened to be Manny Pacheco mm -hmm. of Forgotten Hollywood. You, that was a great honor. Yes. You got to, they chose you to introduce a Spencer, an old Spencer Tracy film, which, by the way, we were not allowed to film, so I don't have any clips of it. Right. <laughs> well, the, the, it had to go back to the studio. Fox, Fox would, would yeah, they would have a cow. Mm. <laughs> Fox, Fox would have a cow. There you go. That's, that's. Yeah. Uh, no, I, yeah, it was really an honor and, and, and double the honor that I get to introduce my favorite actor of all time. Uh, and it was it was Spencer Tracy who came out of the Fox years. You know, everybody knows him from MGM. A very few actually remember that he started his career at Fox. And even more importantly, they were showing a movie, The Mad Game, which happens to be a gangster film. And let's face it, Fox Studios were not known as a gangster studio. I mean, that that honor goes to Warner Brothers. You know, James Cagney, Paul Muni, uh, uh, Humphrey Bogart, Edward G. Robinson, George Rapp. Fox was just not known for that. And yeah. so the idea of associating Spencer Tracy as a gangster was, I think, a unique concept. And and people don't remember him as playing gangsters. But here's here's the facts about this. He was discovered on Broadway by John Ford, the famous director, in a play that was celebrated in the late 1920s. It was called The Last Mile. It's about a gangster who was about to go to the electric chair. Originally, it, I believe it was originated by Clark Gable. Clark Gable was plucked from the Broadway play to go into movies. He was replaced by Spencer Tracy. And Spencer Tracy, of course, does a magnificent job as well, maybe even better. And he is plucked by Fox Studios, and he's replaced by another individual who was going to become an actor on, in Hollywood, and that was Alan Jenkins, and a great character actor that's in one of my books, as a matter of fact. But Spencer Tracy was plucked by Fox, and that was a curse. By all accounts, it was a curse, because Spencer Tracy was then cast in all of these pedestrian dramas. I mean, I don't know how many people remember Helen Twelve Trees, for example, but yeah. these were the kinds of actors that P Spencer Tracy was 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 playing against. And he was put into these really sappy uh, dramas that really didn't go anywhere. Fox was still trying to find itself. This is before film noir. This was before Shirley Temple. And so the big star was going to be Spencer Tracy, but it just didn't pan out. And he was so frustrated by all of this that he would not uh, he would not show up for 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 shootings. He really? would go on two week benders, and he would make gangster films. But he wasn't known as a popular gangster because everybody was talking about what was going on at Warner Brothers. And the one time that Spencer Tracy is memorable in a gangster movie, 20,000 Years at Sing Sing, it's when he was loaned to Warner Brothers. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. So now, tell me about uh, it, the mad game, game yeah. and Spencer Tracy and Claire Trevor. That was right. his co-star. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I, I watched the film, but I, I'm not allowed to show clips of it or anything. I thought they had a great working relationship, a great screen. Yeah, this is before Claire Trevor was really, really popular. I mean, I, I, almost unrecognizable. This was not later. And I mean, we're talking, you know, six, seven years later doing Stagecoach or The High and the Mighty 20 years later. I yeah. mean, this is an early, early work, but you can really see her brilliance. And of course, Spencer Tracy is such a natural actor. Uh, they were great together. Great screen chemistry, as a matter of fact. And then able support from J. Carol Nash and uh, uh, Ralph Morgan, the brother of Frank Morgan. When John Ford thought that he could cast Tr Tracy in a film, it turned out to be a gangster film. And it was called Up the River. And he made it 
with another unknown from Broadway, Humphrey Bogart. And it's the only time that Humphrey Bogart and Spencer Tracy appeared together. In fact, Spence nicknamed him Bogey, and that stuck for the rest of his career. But I'm bringing this up because John Ford worked with him. But John Ford no noticed something when he was on Broadway. And I think this lends to the chemistry between uh, Spencer Tracy and uh, Claire Trevor. Now, John had this kind of a rough voice. So I'm going to roughly kind of imitate it. He would say, uh, more than anything else, I was tantalized by his movements. That's Spencer Tracy he's talking about. I, I don't think many people were ever conscious of uh, Spence's body discipline. He had a fairly good voice. But his cat-like agility was something extraordinary. He made every movement sharp and meaningful and didn't waste a single turn. And, you know, he, he, he knew what he was doing in the room. And while he was doing it, he could play off his actresses so well. And I think Claire Trevor and then with Betty Davis in 20,000 Years in Sing Sing, he was working with really bona fide stars in the making. So by the time he hits MGM, now he's very comfortable opposite Joan Crawford and Myrna Loy. I mean, really top-notch actresses. Yeah. So I, I think it begins with Claire Trevor, and it begins with uh, with Betty Davis, uh, where, where where Spence can really work off a leading lady and, and become a bona fide star. Because you, you, if you can't work off the stars like that, you're going to be relegated to supporting character parts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, uh, Manny, I, I got to tell you, I'm disappointed for our our viewers that, uh, you know, we can't show even clips of the mad game. Uh, it was that one time showing in the, it, at Cinecon. And if you want to see films like that and yes. people like Manny introduce them, uh, the best <laughs> yeah. we can do is, is to re replicate your introduction. <laughs> we right. can't show them the film. So next yeah. time you have to go to Cinecon. Right. Let me just, let, let me leave you with one thing. You know, when, when, um, when Spencer Tracy arrived at Fox, he was fascinated by the filmmaking process. He never studied the craft of filmmaking. He was strictly a stage actor at the time. And he walked up and down the sets and lots, and he would make friends with a future director, a, a real important director, Raoul Walsh, and a future star in John Wayne. He met uh, Will Rogers. Will Rogers befriended him, and they became he became an avid polo player. And and so he he learned his craft while just looking at other people work. And it's a testimony to the grit that that Spencer Tracy had in wanting to be the best in the business. And I mean, I think he succeeded. And when he was finally kicked out of Fox, um, he lands on his feet. And here's why, because at Fox, he did make one really impressive movie. And it was called The Power and the Glory really well done movie probably should have been nominated for an oscar he was that good but in the audience was another a movie mogul and that was louis b mayer and louis b mayer says we got to get this guy and we got he belongs at mgm and so when um when he goes on one of his benders and gets kicked out of fox and then gets sued by fox he lands firmly on his feet because in just a matter of weeks he was signing a contract at MGM, and then the rest is history. The Mad Game is just an early glimpse at what might have been had at Fox knew what to do with this really talented star. Yeah. Well, uh, the folks at Cinecon got a big earful of Manny Pacheco, <laughs> and I know they appreciated your introduction, as we do now, even though we can't see the film. So thank you, Manny. Well, thank you. And I want to thank the audience that was, I mean, the place was packed. I mean, you don't think that the mad game would draw, a, you know, a, a full crowd, but it was just packed right. with, with film goers at Cinecon. And what a lovely treat to watch an obscure film of Spencer Tracy's with a packed audience and having them react like that uh, yeah. to the film. It, it was really special. Well, that's what Cinecon's all about, isn't it? That's right. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.